Hey y'all, TRG here, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be going over the potential for severe weather over the next five to six days. I'll also be talking about an AOI off the coastline of the Carolinas that could bring heavy rain and very isolated gusty winds. Most likely won't form into a tropical storm, but it is still something worth talking about. Let's go right on into today's video. Let's start with the 500 millibar wind speeds on the GFS model run. So this is generally what we're looking at this morning here. We're looking at a very large upper level trough that is located across portions of southern Canada and the northern United States. That's not going to be the main cause for our severe weather today. It's actually going to be this tiny little trough in here that is negatively tilted, as well as if we back that up just a little bit more, this little kink in the jet stream back up here in Nebraska. So two areas that are going to be of cause for severe weather, and that's to cause a potential for severe weather across much of this region today all the way from Iowa, Minnesota back down into northern and central Texas. Then as we go into tomorrow that will traverse eastward likely being fairly on the weaker side of things, but we could still see widespread severe weather all the way up from Wisconsin down through north central Texas, including the potential for a few tornadoes. Then going on into Wednesday, this trough will weaken very significantly as it moves to the north-northeast. Could see some marginal severe weather still occur out here in portions of the Midwest uh, into the Great Lakes area. And also we'll be watching the potential for severe weather back out here towards like Arizona and New Mexico as a new very weak trough begins to form. That very weak trough on Wednesday won't cause too many issues. However, it will cause some issues going into Thursday as it strengthens as it moves to the east, southeast of the Rockies. That will cause the potential for widespread severe weather across portions of Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas, and eastern New Mexico. That's going to then progress eastward in into Friday and we'll move across portions of Michigan could cause some isolated marginal severe weather there but a new area of interest will develop back out in Kansas Missouri Arkansas maybe even into Tennessee and Kentucky going through your Friday June 6th time frame then into Saturday probably near the same ordeal another little trough moving through across Kansas all the way back out into Kentucky Tennessee could cause some very isolated severe storms in a very a very small chance for a spin-up tornado or two may be possible on Saturday as well. It doesn't look like there's much strong jet stream here, but if we do see any type of local enhancement of that jet stream, we could get a locally higher tornado threat on Saturday, June 7th. And then going on into Sunday, June 8th, we're now about 140 hours out. Anything beyond this time frame, it looks like we're going to just get a bunch of inaccuracy. A lot of these days are mesoscale days, which means we're not going to get a lot of details about the severe threat until we really get two, three days out, and especially as we get to the day of the severe weather threat. Before we dive on into the rest of today's video, I ask that you guys hit that like button, share this channel with your family, friends, social media, and hit that subscribe button with the notification bell set to all if you are new to the channel. It's greatly appreciated, and let's get right back on into today's video. Let's take a look at supercell composites. So this is basically tornadic ingredients on a scale of zero to about 40 or so. So as we go through the rest of today, we're really not going to see much ingredients across the U.S. There's really not going to be very high of a tornado threat today. The main tornado threat will probably probably be focused somewhere in like central or southwestern Nebraska, but very low tornado threat today. Tomorrow, that threat may pick up just slightly. We might have a better opportunity for a couple tornadoes tomorrow, all the way from Wisconsin back down into northern Texas. Still not really a good risk for tornadoes, but tomorrow may be a bit more of a tornado maker than today. Wednesday, probably going to be pretty inactive, like I mentioned before, a marginal threat for severe storms back out here in the Midwest, maybe an isolated severe storm back out in Arizona, specifically into New Mexico. And then Thursday, that's when our threats for all hazards start to increase. Thursday, you could see a very decent area here of supercell composite all the way from western Texas, all the way back up into potentially as far as west central Indiana. So a pretty large area uh, for a supercell composite there. And the main region for severe weather will definitely be with this pocket right in here from about north central Kansas, all the way through southwest Kansas into much of Oklahoma, into the panhandle of Texas as well. And then going on into Friday, that should still maintain. We could still see a large area under the gun for severe weather all the way from Ohio Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, all the way back out to where the Rockies start, back out in central New Mexico, central Colorado. 
Then going through Saturday, that's where it's going to be a little bit trickier. You could see there's not any very clear heightened area of tornado potential. It's just a very large area of minimal supercell composite. So if we get any type of enhancement of the jet stream, whether it be in Oklahoma, Arkansas, or Tennessee, that's going to be where our tornado threat may be maximized. But still, Saturday definitely could have some tornado potential, but it doesn't look like anything too over the top just yet. You could see the GFS really wanting to highlight the Texas Panhandle, Oklahoma, southwest oklahoma there for the greatest tornado potential on saturday sunday looks a little bit larger on the gfs but again this is getting pretty far out there uh, not confident in this scenario but we could see a couple severe storms and a tornado threat develop across the south central u.s going through sunday evening and sunday night and then after monday this is where it just it's all crazy on this model run. I'm not going to go any further than June 8th because man, it's just going to get super, super inaccurate. So if we go ahead and take a look at instability and uh, you can see today, there's plenty of fuel out there. A lot, a lot of instability. We don't have a lot of wind shear, but there's a lot of fuel. So that's going to allow for a lot of severe storms, 60, 70 mile an hour winds, some large hail, potentially up to two inch in diameter and could see a spin up tornado or two specifically in central Southwest um, Nebraska. Then going through tomorrow, that instability decreases a little bit, but it is still quite elevated across Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas. Wouldn't it be shocked to see a 5% tornado risk introduced somewhere out here if we do get a little bit better instability, better wind shear, and not as much morning convection tomorrow could end up being upgraded to a 5% tornado risk. Wednesday, you can still have a lot of cape, still a lot of cape across the U.S., but not much wind shear, so the main threat will be damaging winds, isolated large hail, specifically in Ohio, southern Indiana, Kentucky. Thursday, you could see all ingredients should come together for the potential of a couple tornadoes, specifically in the panhandle of Texas into the panhandle in western Oklahoma on Thursday. We'll see Thursday could be one of the bigger tornado makers out of the next week or so. Friday, still plenty of instability. We should still see good wind shear, so probably going to be under the gun for severe weather from Kentucky, Tennessee, back out into Texas and Oklahoma. And then look at that Saturday, plenty of instability across much of the U.S. However, that jet stream weakens, as we saw before on the 500 millibar, so it it's a little bit iffy on how great the tornado threat may be on Saturday. Uh, right now, just too many different variabilities and too much uncertainty on where that may set up. And then Sunday, that's your last day. That's when we start to see a lot more uncertainty with the model runs. So this is as far out as I want to go, but still could see some severe storms all the way from west central Oklahoma through Texas back out into the southern mid-Atlantic on Sunday. Let's switch to the SPC outlook. So this is for today, Monday, June 2nd. We have an enhanced risk for severe weather centered over portions of southwestern Kansas, including Dodge City, back down into north central Texas into the panhandle of Oklahoma as well. That includes Guyman and just west of Woodward, Oklahoma, down through just northeast of Amarillo, Texas, mainly for the potential of damaging winds upwards of 80 miles per hour, especially in that red hatched area. But we could also see some large hail upwards of two inch in diameter, specifically going back up here into central Nebraska, where storms may be a little bit more discrete. Tornadoes are on the table today. It is a large 2% tornado risk, no tornado risk outlined by the SBC further south. Could see a spin up tornado, but it is not a elevated tornado risk. They haven't highlighted any tornado risk there in Oklahoma or Texas. So the main tornado risk, as well as hail risk, in my opinion, should stick out here in Nebraska from central Nebraska into southwest Nebraska and north eastern Colorado. Going into tomorrow, they've maintained a very large slight risk for severe weather all the way from south central Wisconsin all the way into central Texas. Huge slight risk for severe weather, primarily for the potential of damaging winds upwards of 70 miles per hour. Also, some large hail specifically down in Oklahoma and Texas could be possible upwards of two inch in diameter. And again, could see a couple tornadoes tomorrow. It looks a little bit more of an elevated threat tomorrow compared to today. Wouldn't it be shocked if we do get a 5% tornado risk somewhere out out here in Oklahoma, Kansas, or southwestern Missouri. Then going on into day three, uh, I don't believe they have a slight risk just yet. They've maintained a marginal risk for severe weather. I'm recording this before the day three outlook, so there's a chance by the time this video is up, there is the opportunity that they've upgraded this risk to a slight risk for probably damaging winds. Uh, if they do go slight risk, which I'm 50-50 on, it will definitely be for winds. And then another marginal back out here in Colorado and New Mexico, like I was mentioning before, doesn't go into Arizona. Not too surprised by that, but still could see a, a severe 
two out there uh, around central and northeastern Arizona. And then we actually do have a day four risk outlined by the SPC for Kansas, Oklahoma, and into Texas for the potential of all hazards there. So that's going to be a day we need to watch closely. I do think day four could end up being a little bit more of a uh, an issue in terms of our tornado threat. And then, of course, day five, we will have the potential for severe weather as well, but it's not yet highlighted. By the way, day four is Thursday. Day five is Friday. So nothing outlined yet for Friday and nothing outlined yet for Saturday. But I wouldn't be shocked to see those eventually get upgraded to a slight risk as we get closer and we get more details. Like I said, these are mesoscale feature days. So uh, our severe threat is going to be pretty uncertain until we get closer to that day two, day three time frame. That's when things become a little bit more clear here. So this is tropicaltidbits.com. This is the GFS. And it, let's just go ahead and pull this on out into the future. So as we go into June 5th or June 6th, so right around that time frame, we have the opportunity for a spin-up low pressure out here near the Carolinas, probably on the coastline of the Carolinas, mainly going to bring heavy rain to coastal areas, some gusty winds, maybe 10 to 15 miles per hour. Nothing too over the top will be possible, primarily Thursday, Friday, maybe even as late as into Saturday. I don't think this will become a name storm. I don't think it will become a tropical depression or anything like that, uh, but it is going to bring the impacts or rather the potential for very minimal impacts. Uh, it shouldn't be anything too crazy. Look at the European model run. The Euro has the same ordeal, some heavy rain in Southeast South Carolina, Southwest North Carolina, gusty winds, nothing too over the top. The Canadian model run, same ordeal, a little bit stronger on the Canadian model. That does have a indication of a weak low pressure pressure with the system just southeast of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina on June 5th, which is going to be Thursday. So we'll, we'll need to watch it closely uh, just in case it brings a little bit heavier of rainfall impacts there to the Carolinas. So this is the CPC outlook for week three. So that's going into the middle of June and they have a 20% chance for some tropical development out here, a 20% or less chance for tropical development. And notice how that's in the Western Caribbean and the Southwestern Gulf, not into the Central Gulf, a 10% chance for tropical development out here in the next seven days. That's why I really wanted to mention that tropical system being possible off the coastline of the Carolinas. Biggest impact will be gusty winds of like 15 miles per hour. And then uh, probably some isolated flash flooding around the coastline areas from Charleston back up into Wilmington, North Carolina. We'll know more as we get closer. Uh, right now, we're just going to keep an eye on that area of interest. If you are going out for vacation out in this area, just taking a general trip to the coastline, just take note of that towards uh, somewhere between June 7th and like June 11th. We're going to keep an eye on this for tropical development. So might want to plan that accordingly. Um, but I don't think it will be anything too over the top. Really just going to be some annoying rain, isolated flash flooding, and then, like I said, some gusty winds. All right, that's going to be it for today's video. I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you hit that like button. Share the video on your way out as well as subscribe if you haven't already. It's really, really appreciated. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your Monday night. Goodbye.